Welcome to Two Talks, a new series I'm making where I interview my friends about a topic of their choice. Today, I will be interviewing my friend Tyler about media and politics. Tyler is an ambitious young reporter and media specialist who runs his own website, tknn.info, where he posts news stories about government and politics. So, Tyler, tell us uh, what you know and what you would like to discuss about media and politics. Well, Shane, it's nice to talk to you today. And certainly, always, the media is interconnected with politics. It's famously been described as the fourth estate of our government, or the fourth branch. But in this election cycle in particular, we're certainly seeing it take an active role where, with Donald Trump's rise, many people, in efforts to try to explain how he was able to win the nomination or how he's be able to be so popular, many people have tried to make a connection to the media and try to blame or tie his success to the media and all the amount of free media that he gets. So that's certainly something that's going to be studied and certainly something that I look at as a media reporter is how they cover, what words they use, how much they cover, and then whether or not there is, you can make a tie to Donald Trump's success and his media coverage. Uh, so, Tyler, do you personally believe that Donald Trump's rise has been due to the media? in most part, or do you believe his rise in popularity is most likely due to some other factor, and media is just kind of either contributing a little bit or not contributing at all? Well, certainly, I don't think you can credit too much to this election cycle, because if you look at Donald Trump and this campaign cycle and campaign cycles in the past, one of the biggest hurdles for any candidate is name recognition. Because unless you're an incumbent or you're incredibly well-known, the biggest thing that governors, senators, representatives have to do is go and make their case, let people know who they are. The journalists know who they are, political news junkies know who they are, but the average person in Iowa and New Hampshire doesn't know who a senator or governor is. So they have to then go, say who they are, not necessarily say why you should elect them just yet, but to say, hey, I exist. Donald Trump, because he's been in the public spotlight since the 1980s, did not have to do that. He already has sky high neck name recognition. So he definitely had, he was able to save millions of dollars with that. And he was able to skip that whole process of saying, here's who I am, here's my record, and move right to, here's why you should vote for me. This is why you should just, just as, and he was doing that as other candidates, such as Marco Rubio, were saying, hello, I'm Marco Rubio, nice to meet you. He was able to say, okay, I've already met you, you know who I am, this is why you should elect me. So certainly that was very beneficial to him. And Donald Trump knows the media better than any other person. He's a person who has sculpted his media image over the last 30 years as an incredibly successful person. And just over the last 10 or so years when he's been on The Apprentice, he's learned what makes good television, what viewers like to watch. And he's learned that with The Apprentice, and The Apprentice does pretty well with ratings, And then he was able to adapt those same lessons to his presidential campaign, say certain things, do certain things that made viewers want to watch that. And then when viewers and Americans wanted to see that, then the news organizations were all too happy to go and do that in pursuit of ratings. Okay. So on the topic of his name recognition, Tyler, and his use of his knowledge of television to promote himself and then get better ratings among the people. Now, one would also say that Hillary Clinton has tremendous name recognition and that she, in addition to Trump, did not really need to introduce herself to the American public because they already knew who she was. Now, do you feel as though Trump still had a had an advantage over Hillary Clinton because he knew how to work the media? Or do you believe that Trump and Clinton had an equal advantage as Clinton also knew to an extent how to really control the media and news and what people wanted to see. Well, I think, first of all, it's a little bit hard to to compare them because of the fields that they were running in. Donald Trump was a Republican, so he was running against fellow Republicans. Hillary Clinton was running against Democrats. And so they both, you were right, had very high name recognition, which benefited Hillary Clinton and she kind of had like a built-in advantage when going against her four other competitors, three of which were relatively unknown and 
stayed in the single digits for most of their campaigns or all their campaigns. It really only Bernie Sanders was the one that was able to come up and take her on. Donald Trump, he was able to, he had such a large field that just him being well known was able to, there was 16, 17 candidates. So if you take 1% divide that by 16, 17, you get like 6% each. He just got up higher than that and he was able to keep breaking up the anti-Trump movement and make sure he has a majority. And the other kind of critical difference is Hillary Clinton has been well known, yes, but she's been well known in politics for the last 20 years or since the 1990s when her husband was elected president or got to national stage. And throughout that time, she was always very active um, in these last 20 years. So she's been in the political debate for all this time. And that's why she has a high name, name recognition. And what goes along with that is she's, for Democrats, someone that's really well liked. For Republicans, she's someone that's been attacked for the last 20 years. And so while she may have that high name recognition, she comes in with a good deal of people having firmly established ideas about who she is. And for Republicans, they see her as someone that's just another Democrat, which certainly would not always help her. But Donald Trump, he has had that name, high name recognition, but he was not involved in politics like Hillary Clinton has. And the one thing that we saw kind of come up as a campaign issue was he was a person who was supportive of both political parties in the past. Um, he started getting more politically yeah. active. Wasn't he a, a Democrat in 2004, actually? Or am I am I incorrect there? Well, there there are there have been times in the past where he has identified with the Democrats or supported Democratic candidates. Um, he's he's always said that he was a person who, as a businessman, you need to be friends with everybody. Mm -hmm. Yes. And so Donald Trump, when we talk about like these firmly established ideas of who a person is, Hillary Clinton is Democrat and someone who's working with that like in politics. Donald Trump. He's established himself as a person who's in business, first of all, and as incredibly success, successful. So he doesn't, he comes in with that high name recognition, but he doesn't come in with that much baggage as opposed to Hillary Clinton. Okay. So, um, Tyler, just to branch off from this slightly, though not entirely, um, there is also a third candidate kind of still in the race at this point in time in the election season mm -hmm. um donald gary trump johnson. is a person yes gary johnson jill stein no um donald trump is a presumptive republican nominee hillary clinton is a presumptive democratic nominee well but she kinda. has yeah she... kind of but she she's still receiving opposition from senator bernie sanders now bernie sanders before this election cycle did not have nearly the amount of name recognition as Hillary Clinton and Donald Trump. So why do you believe that he has been able to do some, so well in this primary season, despite him being virtually unknown beforehand? Well, first of all, just to clarify the one thing, Hillary Clinton is not the presumptive nominee because she hasn't received the amount of delegates. Neither has Donald Trump, but he's the only one left, so we can it's safe to uh, call okay. him the presumptive nominee. Hillary Clinton is about 90 away. Um, but also the Democrats. Is that, is that including superdelegates? That, that is including superdelegates. Okay, so taking superdelegates out, though, that is... Well, Could you even... If you take Whatever. it... The, the hard part is, when calculating delegates on the Democratic side, you can take out superdelegates, yes, to try to give them more, some people would say, accurate, but the problem is it looks like everyone's incredibly far away from the goal. Because the amount of delegates that you need is the total number of delegates, which is regular delegates and superdelegates, divide by and then you need to get half you need to get a majority so half plus one or whatever and so well it's some people prefer to not count the super delegates that's part of the total pot um but back to your original question with bernie sanders part of it is on the democratic side just like on the republican side there's a very active in on the democratic side liberal base who wanted to see someone of theirs one of the top candidates, if she had gone in, would have been would have been Elizabeth Warren. There was a huge movement for the draft Warren. And mm -hmm. certainly on the Democratic side, there's a, a healthy number... Well, maybe healthy is not the right there. There's a significant number of people who see Hillary Clinton as too moderate, too conservative. And obviously, it'd be kind of bizarre if there was a party and one person ran and everybody, like, or more than 95% of the people all supported that one candidate. So no matter who ran... 
they were going to go and do it. And Bernie Sanders benefited because he was well known and well liked on in the liberal circles. Uh, you had the other three candidates. You have Martin O'Malley, who was not incredibly well known. And once people started looking into him, there was basically once the Baltimore riots started happening, that's when he really started to suffer. You have Lincoln Chaffee, who was not really well known. Jim Webb, who was moderately well known, but the problem was he was too conservative for the modern day Democratic Party. There was no way he'd get the nominated. So he really just came down to Bernie Sanders versus Hillary Clinton. And for all those people who felt that Hillary Clinton was too moderate or conservative, they just go to Bernie Sanders. And certainly as time went on, it was some of them were really supportive of Bernie. Other ones were more anti-Clinton votes. And in some states, that was enough to get him a win. Other states, that was enough to get him 40%. But there's always going to be opposition to somebody. In 2012, there's the significant opposition to Mitt Romney. Every month we had the anti-Romney. So certainly it's not unusual for there to be people who dislike a candidate before they become the nominee. Mm-hmm. Um, so Tyler, I hate to, to cut off this discussion early, but uh, we seem to have reached our time limit. So I'd like to thank you for coming on and giving yeah, us this time. thanks for having me. And then, um, everybody, you can check out Tyler's website, tknn.info. It's, again, it's a news website where he puts out stories about government and politics. And, like, we, we haven't been sponsored. Like, Tyler's a good friend of mine. I, I like, honestly really read his website often. And I, I really do like what he puts out. I feel it's very unbiased, and I feel it's very straight to the facts. So Thanks, if you'd like So if you'd like to check out Tyler's website, you can. I will have a link in the description. And, uh, yeah, thanks for watching. Yeah, it's been a lot of fun. Thanks for having me. All right, bye, Tyler. Bye, Shane.